Is this a big band for you? They will. Uh, we should. Are we? Are we recording? We're doing it. We're, oh, we're doing it. it. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, they. Yeah. Um, it's, it, specifically this album and when they came on the scene. It's one of those things where it's like I remember almost to what I was wearing on my body when I was a kid. You know, like wow, when I, the first time I heard this stuff. You know, because I remember the subsequent years of everything he did uh, and like. You know, been caught stealing was such a monster, monster, monster hit. Like it was monster inescapable hit. during that year. Mm -hmm. But like this album was still kind of like it was. It was that thing that was super in its way underground, but so fucking undeniable. Like it just hit the music scene like a meteor. Nothing you, shot. But you think that? Oh, but you're saying this record because I I don't even remember them from this record. I only remember them from Bit Caught Stealing. So by oh. that time, and that was such a big music video and right. such yeah. a huge, it, dude. It was just I remember everything about the way they looked. They were yeah. like bohemian hippie rock stars and the big hats, like a Jamiroquai hat. Yeah. No sh no shirts. Not no one shirt. of them owned Never. a shirt. Never. No. No, yeah, when the, when this album came, I remember being, there was a place in Portland called Second Avenue Records that I would go to and I would just look at records. They'd have, they, 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 they would pull out everything that's iconic now that what came out, they're like, here. So you'd be like, NWA, straight out of Compton. Who are they? You know, yeah. Jane's Addiction, nothing shocking. You're like, naked Siamese twins on fire. Like I saw the cover <laughs> and was like, good Lord. And I, I got the tape. It was back when I used to skateboard and I was terrible. But I that this yeah this album. Wait, hold on a second. Yeah, <laughs> why were you so bad at skateboarding? Just because you're so six funny. five and it. lumpy. Just, you're not. You're like kind of lumpy, but also kind of a little bit pear shaped. You know, still same. Like I have a kind of a permanent eighth grade body in a way, and and just kind of like the 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 the, the high center of gravity. I liked riding a skateboard to get around. I was that much of a dork on it. Oh. I wasn't good at tricks or ollieing, but I remember riding up and over things to you know ocean size and all this stuff because it just it just rolls it's obviously like uh uh, uh kind of like badass surfer music in a way and it was yeah. it was like nothing i'd heard before because it was like i remember henry Rollins said it best he was just like james addiction came on the scene and made all the hair metal bands worthless like made them all just like feel like clowns and like kind of outdated and wait what are we wearing because they were they look like aliens they look like they yeah. come out of the ground in this beach with like weird kind of dreadlocks or clothes yeah. just hanging on them. It was like they made their own style up, you know. It was there was, it was a amazing. there was a band there was a band. I don't know if you remember them, but this the vibe of the outfit for Jane's Addiction is the same for the band the Jellyfish. Do you remember the Jellyfish? Oh, I don't pull think up, so. Adam, pull up while he while 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 Matt uh, keeps going. Pull okay. up the picture of fucking Jellyfish, and then okay. pull up side by side like fucking Jane's. Day. It's just it's a it's almost like a psych. So Jellyfish was like more psychedelic, mm. and 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 like in a world of like hair metal, they really stuck out because yeah. they the music was great. Guys, uh, Roger. Eight, not Roger, some Roger Mace. Fuck, I'm gonna get people are gonna yell at me. He plays with, with Beck. He's like a huge okay. musician that kind okay. of went on. I don't know what happened to the rest of the band, but the guys in LMNOP, my band, love Jellyfish. So there's yeah. something there. Jane's Addiction, probably the same, but they just have this look that was so, it was so retro, but also, and let me see if I can say this right. Jellyfish was retro as retro. They Jane's Addiction was retro as this is new. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the thing is, okay, yeah, yeah, that was and of very, very <laughs> of the time. And you know, I should also say in reference to that, uh, <laughs> to that Jellyfish. Henry Rollins quote, like, I also liked. I mean, I loved metal, and I thought, I can still do think Jane's Addiction is pretty fucking metal. Like, yeah. uh, uh, you know, Mountain Song. Mountain Song's insanely metal. Mountain Song mm -hmm. sounds like like if it if never had come out, I could see like Red Fang coming out with it now. You know, it's just yeah. like so they're 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 it kind of jumped around and got a little silly in places, you know, like uh 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 idiots rule and stuff, but that mm. horn section's incredible. Like it's <laughs> 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 Yeah, and, and, and when you're a kid and you're like, Yeah, idiots do rule. I'm stupid. I'm twelve, you know, and, and uh I had a dad. I remember that one really sticking with me because I was like, Wow, he's 
he's just kind of singing about how he, he his dad left him and just like, well, okay. And I was like, I've yeah. never heard that before because it just sounds so traumatic. My father was always there. I was very lucky that way. <laughs> but I, I, I remember listening to that song and being like, wow, this guy just doesn't give a fuck. Like, for want of another way to put it, it's like he's worked through his trauma w without even, you know, like in, in, in effortlessly. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Yeah. So it was I remember that album being really really big. Like each kind of song meant a lot. So you, so you got this way. you got this right as this dropped. You're saying yep. this came, it was like I had the cassette. Yeah. This yeah. album never this album this record in particular the only song that I might have known because I think it had a comeback years later was Jane says. Oh, you Jane well, that, I forget about Jane says because Jane says for its time was almost as ubiquitous as uh, uh, Been Caught Stealing. It didn't go as big, but it was just, it was a beautiful song about a, a prostitute drug addict. And that was one of the things that like, nobody was writing songs about that. It'd be like, you well, know, Axel. We are, hold up, hold up. We actually did a Lou Reed record. Oh, Adam, yes. what was that record? That was all about heroin and prostitutes. Right. Well, I guess, I guess I'm, I'm kind of looking at this through the lens of, in a sense, sadly, kind of the pop charts in a yeah. sense because yeah. like the bands where I was kind of like every album that came out especially then like late 80s you could see people like you'd kind of see what they were going for like oh yeah. you want to be this or you want to be that I could not tell what the hell these guys wanted to be or if they cared at all and that was to me as a kid that was incredibly cool and when when did this record come out Adam wait let me guess okay go please was it was it was it 87 88 or 89 1988. Their first album was a live album that came out in 87. This was the first studio release. Got like, it. This sounds like a 90s record. 100,000%. How do you do that? How yeah. do you... What is popular? <laughs> what is popular? In 88, I'm trying... Adam, please look up whatever the bands that were really big you during got, that time. I'm thinking Motley, Motley Crue. Got, Motley, Motley Crue was kind of at their nadir, but you had like, you know... Poison. Like Poison. Guns and Roses. Guns and Roses were every guns and roses owned everything and i think one reason that uh they that jane's addiction got looked at is because guns and roses brought the whole they they took they they took the motley crew were dangerous ball and ran with it and everyone's just like oh these guys are kind of scary you know like axel doesn't give a shit he takes three hours fuck. to get to the fucking stage yeah he's getting yeah. a blow job wow <laughs> you know from stephanie seymour one of the <laughs> hottest models of all time <laughs> the girl in the video <laughs> yeah, and then dude. you had uh, uh uh jane's addiction who are kind of like they still had a, a little bit of that but a, even more of the we don't like they're pretty much like anti-mtv in a sense they just weren't they're making these weird artsy videos that were yeah this you know. this album in particular, this album in particular, I don't think MTV really fucked with it at all. I no. mean, I, I but I no. but I like I said, I remember, I remember the music video for Stop, which oh, yeah. which I which is the song that Incredible. made me a fan of them. Yeah, even the way they opened the record because I bought I bought uh what's the, the next record Ritual de Lo Habitual. I bought that. Right. Yep. Um, which once again, like you said, the album cover. By the way, when you said uh, flaming, would you say flaming they midgets did, uh, on fire? Flaming <laughs> twins with their hair on fire. Yeah, I was like, is that a band from Portland? Like, I didn't know <laughs> that's what you were talking about the album cover. I was like, wait, and it just you kept going. So I was like, I'll get that joke later. <laughs> no, I'll get that joke that was, later. Yeah, I remember um, being, and the name of it, nothing shocking. You're looking at that image and going, fuck that shocking. And it's saying, no, nothing is. You're like, whoa. You know, <laughs> no. All right. Adam said MTV wouldn't air the video for Mountain Song due to the nudity in the video. Can I also say something? Uh, and and being, it's just this is totally off topic, but we're talking about album covers, yeah, and please. how it's art. It is an album cover is just as important as the music that's inside of it. So even when Kanye just puts a blank thing with like a little, with, I don't know, he just had that one record that was just like maybe a line in red. Like uh -huh. that was his statement that goes along with his record. Yeah. We put up the album cover for. Uh, Pixies, Surfer Rosa, yeah, uh, and I and we had the artwork that we're gonna get for you for this one that our boy uh, Nick from who's young and sick who makes for us, okay. and I posted it on Instagram, and they and I and Pat and Oswald even like double dipped with me, so we were getting we were on dual accounts. I was like, this sure. is great, and 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 fucking Instagram took it down because they said it was lewd, and then I was just like, there are buttholes. Girls like Instagram models are showing their buttholes and maybe not the full butthole, but the, I don't know what you'd call that. The circumference of it. Like right, the rim. Yeah. yeah. The rim. And it's like, that's, that's not offensive. And yeah. yet, 
and yet even what you said adam is like the that that nudity is is just for some reason even if it's in this on an album cover they're like nope this a nipple god forbid god yeah. forbid here here's how here's how dumb the nipple thing especially is yeah during the days of of, of fucking like <laughs> uh zoom, zoom shows which i remember you made that saw that fucking video that was so funny thank you very much nobody liked it it didn't get oh, anywhere know, hilarious because like you, everyone buddy. felt that everyone felt that way everyone's like this sucks so fucking bad <laughs> and i was on uh what a uh, uh, hot tub and i just did this i did this dude who who ran a bi business of of guys who like he, he, this it was called the sweaty wrestling pit and it was just a bunch of guys who would wrestle shirtless in a big pit and he sponsored the event and like they were shutting him down because they you know had to wear masks and like but that goes against our whole tenant and i just read this manifesto and i ripped my shirt off and my the message chat thing blows up all the other performers like put your shirt on put your shirt on because there was a thing for all zoom shows they couldn't say no breasts no tits no boobs they had to say no nipples because it was seen as you know you had people who were like they, they couldn't police it they had trans people, non-binary people who would take a shirt off and people were like, well, but is that, but wait, is that a man? Is it a woman? Oh, hold, yeah. hold, hold on. Wait, yeah. no, you know, and it was that it showed that that alone showed how stupid like the anti-nipple thing is. It's so dumb. Like if I show my nipple, it's it's so that they they, they had to go no nipple, even men. Because you question like, like just what so i can show my nipple in public i can be shirtless on my instagram thing but this beautiful flamenco dancer can't have her shirt off because why because a, a, a full breast is sexual there are men with fuller breasts than that flamenco dancer <laughs> who say that's not sexual you know what i mean it's so yeah. fucking stupid sorry to go off on a rant no but. no no i'm with you that that's that brings me to my next question yeah. what is a bigger moment in our lives seeing Chris Rock get hit by Will Smith or Justin Timberlake pulling out Janet Jackson's titty. Wow. I will say, I will say Chris Rock getting hit because, you know, as an adult comedian, just like you who do, does this for a living, I didn't yeah. have that feeling of, Oh no, they're going to start slapping us all. But it was just like to see someone that famous lose their mind to see like, Justin Timberlake ripped that thing off and her look around, the lights go up down. It was, yeah. like, was like, what a strange choreo choreographed move that was. <laughs> yeah. Which I still think it was. I still think, you know. It was, it, didn't, but why was it strange? They both got that, thrown under the bus. She it, had a tassel on. She had for a fucking sure. Thing. And the ruby, the ruby you know, star thing. I remember but that dude, being, I remember that being like a wonderfully awkward moment at like Super Bowl huh? parties where you're like, the fuck? You know, where I, I saw, like, you look over and be one guy who was really high, who was like, Ugh. <laughs> like, he didn't want to ask if it happened. Did, did you guys? <laughs> and then a guy next to him would spit his beer out and people were like, oh, God. So to me, to me, the, the whole Nipplegate shit was just more, I hated how Janet Jackson got thrown under the bus, but that was yeah. weeks later. In the moment, it was like, Wow. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing bad about this at all. Nothing. No, there, there wasn't. But it's so it, but weird. It, but it so felt weird. like. But it felt like the end of the Sopranos. We were like, "Wait, is this is this coming back? Wait, what just happened? Is wait, it is it over? What are we? <laughs> yeah, there, what a strange crescendo. Oh man! All right, yeah. is that, dude, we got fresh fresh wings. All right, yeah, great, great. Yeah. Let's go, Patriots. I don't even know and who the, was and playing. And the whole the whole idea that it was like, oh, it, it wasn't supposed to rip off. Yes, it fucking was. Yeah, everyone was. knew it was going to come off. Everyone knew. It, nothing comes off that well. It reminded me of those scenes in like movies where someone's like, like, give me this necklace. And they just grab the, the medallion and pull and the necklace breaks. That's never worked. You can't, the guy's head would just go down every time. Like, <laughs> or the chain breaks and all the rubies go. <laughs> it's everything flies. It, it's never a clean, you know, you're it's out of ever. the tribe or whatever <laughs> bullshit it is. You know, if you try to pull someone, a piece of someone's like bustier off, the whole bustier is coming. Like that's <laughs> stitched leather. You're not going to, no one has a, you know, I don't know, fucking, you know, like Triple H could maybe pull that off. Like a, some kind of monster wrestler guy or something, but not Justin Timberlake. But yeah, the, 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 the Will Smith, Chris Rock thing was just like, that made everyone feel terrible. <laughs> terrible. I, I, were you watching it live? Oh, uh, no, I, I, my phone blew up. And my wife's phone phone blew up, and then we turned on the Oscars and rewound it, and we're like, "What the fuck?" 
I yeah. just bought a guitar that day and I remember I was like playing like Save Me by Amy Mann. That's the song from Magnolia. Yeah. Oh, a great song. <laughs> you look like yeah, yeah. I was just like really in it. Song. And then fucking that happened. And then this audio goes out and I'm just like, wait, no. And then, the, and then it just, they kept going and then it got the, the keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. And then I mean, it was, <laughs> that was our JFK. That was our, like, that's a challenger moment. That's a nine 11. Yeah, you'll always a, remember where you were when, moment. when yeah. you'll remember where you were, just like you remember where you were when Jane's addiction, we got to talk yeah. about Jane's album. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, somebody it, it, mad right now. It's a, it's a funny correlate correlation you're drawing because I remember seeing that album cover and having that thing of like, you can just have this out. You can in a store, you know, cause a lot of them would, you know, they'd have it in a sleeve or whatever yeah uh -huh. second avenue didn't give a shit they had everything you know slayer shirts hanging and stuff and stuff like every genre and i remember i remember buying that because i i think i someone had played you know the crate is always the crazy kid the crazy kid who's like already smoking cigarettes or whatever and he does you know has the most beat up skateboard he's like you gotta hear this shit and he played me like you know mountain song and i was like holy fuck fuck and like then i listened to the rest of the album and yeah it was over. so so my question to you because this is growing i grew up in the dc area which I, like i said i don't for some reason jane's addiction didn't pop until that second record D dc though it will always be its own thing and that's i give dc so much credit it was dc's doing shit that no in every every <laughs> crack time, mayors we're but, doing well, shit but all, i'm just talking music but yeah like, oh, just okay, like yeah. The, the the you know the ultimate unsurpassed punk music and then you had like hip-hop kids who would go to dc and dc's like nah we do go go here dog and you're like yeah. what the fuck is go go you know like okay. dc is incredible man. go go rules but what so when so portland yeah. what was port was portland hair metal was portland, portland really into hair metal and portland, then and then the grunge scene just completely changed everything i'm assuming it, it was it was like a it was like a a gold rush for anything for anything that we could find that would that would kind of be you know like interesting or cool or Kind of define. I was thinking. I was thinking about this the other day. When I was in sixth grade, uh, I went to Harriet Tubman Middle School, and uh, oh fuck, hold on. And uh, sorry. They're, they're calling you. The alumni is calling you right now. They're Harriet right Tubman. Now. Yeah, from my sixth grade, my sixth grade middle school. And I was uh, all I listened to was like Public Enemy. And my best friend was an eighth grader, a black girl named Africa, and all she listened to was Sex Pistols. I'm sorry. Yeah, God. it was like the weirdest. So like you had every not we're, just to, like, gonna, we're just gonna skip over that a black girl named Africa that's I mean guys. I mean I well mean. And, and she and she caught a lot of guff from the other black kids listening to punk rock and having oh, like, okay. in Africa you know getting made fun of yeah but like you know I, I feel like a lot of us were artists children and like you know people who were like just kind of doing their own thing you had a lot of there's a huge punk scene and stuff but like I always like was a hip hop kid but like you know metal and punk rock and stuff too and um you I, all i remember like what the difficult thing about portland was it wasn't cool and we knew it we knew it wasn't cool for us the coolest city close to us was seattle we're like sure Man. we used to be like i bet they're doing cool shit in seattle right now like we're just walking around a mall holding our, our skateboards <laughs> man it's cool stuff happened and i'm sure people in seattle were saying that shit about la who knows you know, but, First, of course, of course. But, but so, so my question is, is yeah, did sorry. did Portland as a whole start shifting earlier than the rest of the world where mm -hmm. it took a few more years for hair metal to die and Nirvana to take off? But you're getting this band Jane's Addiction. Right. And if it's really at this record store, did you see the record store change in tone? No. Well, th this record store, as far as I'm, as far as I know, it's still there. It was just. I mean, it, it had it had everything kind of undergroundish. It had everything uh, reggae. It had uh, you know everything ska, every everything hip hop. As soon as something new would come out, uh, it would like it would pop up there. So we just go and look at that rack. There was another place called Music Millennium that's still yeah. there that's also great. Um, but it was just kind of like it was it, it it was like pay attention to the record store guy. The record store guy knows. You know, or yeah. for a girl, like they know they're like, what do you like? Oh, check this shit out. You know, yeah. and, and anytime I would be like, oh, this is a cool record. Like this album looks badass, but I wouldn't ask them first. I would be ass out because I'd buy it and go home and be like, this sucks. You know, yeah. like, I had to be like, is this any good? And they'd be like, not really. You know, like they're not, they, they just kind of really cared about curating, you know, the, 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 the getting the good music out there. So we kind of, we, those of us who knew that, that, 
that uh, store had the inside track. Because besides that, you know, you had like Music Land in the mall. Which Sam is, Goody's, Sam Goody. Waxy Maxi's, like yeah. real, real yeah. lame record stores. Yeah, we yeah. didn't have that in, in the D. Well, we did in the D.C. area, but the, where I grew up in Montgomery County, right outside, mm -hmm. it was you were at the the mercy of of radio, MTV and, sure. and, and occasional Rolling Stone, NME, but NME in the 2000s in 88. I mean, I'm fucking Circus Magazine and Metal Edge, bro. Of course, of course. That's, that's yeah. what I'm getting. I just don't remember. I'm, I'm, this is what's so funny because, in my opinion, I was shocked that this record was on the 500 and not Ritual. Yeah, I, I, as was I. But I like. I also can see it just from when it came out. I mean, that that uh, Ted just admit it song that just starts out doom 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 doom. Do, you know, it sounds like it could just be like a goofing around sublime song or something. And then it starts speeding up near the end and that burr, chur, burr, and he just starts yelling <laughs> sex is violent over and over and over. Yeah. I remember as a kid, I was like, holy, this is crazy that he's saying that because it, it you think about fucking, you think about, uh, uh, you know, being passionate with somebody, you know, thoughts you really didn't have in terms of what truly sexual activity is. And he's yelling it over. It wasn't just a throwaway line. And I was like, this is as crazy as anything I'm listening to in rap at anywhere. And and it, it reminded me when when Nine Inch Nails came out, I was like, you know, the wanna fuck you like an animal. Uh -huh. I was kind of like, that just reminded me of of Ted just admit it. Because it was like it you know, you know, when you first heard that line, you were like, What did he say? Excuse me? Yeah. You know, like this song's on the radio. Really? And this like, was this yeah. was this was played on the radio. Well, uh, not, I not just, Ted, just admit it. I mean, the Nine Inch Nails song. The, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Like oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. That, that song. When you Remember when that song came out, it was the Ted just admit it moment, but for the country, you know, from, you know, and it was, yeah. But this, this is like, I, I like, <clears throat> let's, we, we got to tell everybody who this band is because I know there's people that still have no fucking idea. Um, all right. So if you're curious, everybody, who <laughs> Jane's Addiction is, it is, uh, there's frontman Perry Farrell, uh there's guitarist dave navarro steven perkins on the drum both mm -hmm. both perry and steven have both been on this podcast oh cool steven's awesome perry's great too i want to save the perry story because okay. Okay. i have pictures that go with it and cool. i have a whole ted talk uh they were one of the first <laughs> alternative bands to start gaining mainstream attention and success in the late 80s um they went into the studio in january 88 to record their first studio album after they already did a live thing for triple x records uh, where's the dude, Adam and Peter, you might have to cut this part out. Where's all the good stuff about the, Oh, here's the background. All right. Where's, is there any more Adam? Is there any more about like just how they got formed or anything? Uh, that just in that f first fact, pretty much. I went abbreviated. Yeah. Hey, you, you fucking abbreviated. <laughs> I was, I was hoping you'd talk about how they met. Okay. You're good. Don't worry. Don't worry, dude. You're, well, you're good. This, I, the, the sun's out of your eyes. The, the thing, the thing that I do remember from those days is that uh, Perry Farrell had, had no singing training and was just kind of like he just started like he was. Well, I just want to be in a band, and I remember that that blew my mind when I learned that because I remember hearing that album being like, listen to this dude's voice. Like certain people, you hear their voice and you're like, nobody sings like that. Yeah, it's not a natural you know. singing voice that like it's not like Axel that belts. It's not like right. you know. But Axel's another one who you hear his voice and you're like, where'd you get that voice? You know, there's there's certain people that like, you know, Vince Neil or something. You're like, it's cool. Yeah, it's a cool rock voice, but it's yeah. not like or like it, Axel, Ozzy, Perry Farrell. You just like so unique. Like well, how so, how did you come? How did you say to yourself, this is how I sing? So, no, I, I I can't agree with you more. I, I I this is this brings in my next question is okay. that is Perry the band because there's mm. there's a little history. So this is this is the cool thing that I read and Adam had found for me. Um, so during the recording sessions, uh, Perry stated that he wanted fifty percent of the band's publishing royalties for lyric for writing the lyrics. Plus, we're not done plus a quarter of the remaining half for writing music, adding up to 62.5%. And the bassist, Eric Avery, is stunned uh, by these demands, and Farrell uh, refused to compromise. Uh, eventually, the band breaks up, 
Um, and then an executive for Warner Brothers calls an emergency meeting and basically gets them to do it. Um, because shit. they hadn't released anything yet, right? Adam, they hadn't released wow. anything. Yeah, so they have nothing. They're just this LA band. Oh is LA? God. They're this, they're they're LA. They're, they're LA, this this mm-hmm. LA band that's that, like you said, that's got a buzz. They're different. So my question is, is Perry Farrell the reason why this band does he deserve that 62.5%? Boy, I wish I knew. You know, I I I don't. I mean, they the this the sound varies so much. That it's so different. I, kind of, I It's one of those things on the one hand where I'm just like, you know, part of me goes, yeesh, what a dick. But then I go, wait, but did he? I don't know. And also, I'm looking at it from the position of those band members and kind of going, well, do I want 100% of nothing? Or do I want 10% of this iconic thing that will live on forever? I feel like James Addiction songs get played all around the world all the time now. Yeah. You know? I've um, I've done been caught stealing at the jam. I've done it multiple times. It's a fun song to do. It's yeah, his, his voice is so much fun to imitate. You know, when you listen to this record, mm-hmm. uh, it's his voice that is just that's what is that is the thing about this band. It's the, I'm trying to think of who sounds like him, like who sounds like Perry Farrell, like that as that nasally, yeah. you know. It's yeah. it's not even it's not even like he's singing he's he's like chanting and chanting and it's like a melodic yell. So you know? all right, so I want to tell my story. I got to tell you why. Please, do I do it now? Do I do it now, everybody? Yeah, I think it's fine. I think you've teased it enough. <laughs> it's all right. So I might have talked about this on the podcast, but I don't think I did because it was like we signed an NDA, but. Oh, fuck. This, can you talk about it? Yeah, I'm going to because I don't really get I don't think I signed an indie. I don't know what I signed. I, and also <laughs> I he so one, I just want to say that the experience is one of the most magical things I've ever experienced with another human being. And he yeah. really is a special person of energy and light and love. Like that's he a, loves all I've heard, and yeah. he feels on such a deeper level that to be at his house. Uh, so this is right before I left for Italy in um February of, of 2020. So pandemic isn't raging. It's, you know, I'm about to take my mom to Italy. And then when I was there, that was when uh that was when COVID hit Italy. God, I know. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, oh, I was fuck you, poor guy. And my, my mom already in her head has this whole mantra of like God hates me. So when that happened, she was oh. just like, Oh, here we go. Of course. <laughs> of course. We're all gonna die of the virus. <laughs> but mm, isn't this knocky good? Uh so <laughs> So we, he's supposed to come to my house. It gets moved to his house and I call it Pamela, the photographer, and we head over there and it's out in Pacific Palisades. And it's, I mean, gorgeous, just be a beautiful Los Angeles day. And so we drive in, it's up in the hills. We get to his place. It's, you walk in and it's like, I think an assistant let us in, but it's just exactly how you would think. Great art. It's beautiful. It's, yeah. it's got style. It's cool. Uh, we walk in, they take us to the recording studio and there he is in an all denim outfit with like a, like a scarf on. And he's just uh, the man. He's like, yeah, well, he was just, he's like, I'm just dealing with a lot. So I'll be up there in a second. I'm like, oh, well, I appreciate you and blah, blah, blah. We go up there and they get us drinks and snacks and stuff. And then he comes up and he starts going off about, about Trump, like will not stop. It's, and he's like, I can't believe these kids in cages. I just, Oh man, it's just like the world is just, and how can they let these people, they're stealing. And he's just reciting shit from MSNBC. And and I know that because of my mom. My mom is the exact same way. She's just mad all the time and she lives watching it. And I don't say anything. He goes out, puffs a joint for a second. I go, hey man, after the podcast, you mind if I hit that with you? He goes, of course, brother. And then he sits down, we're talking about Brian Eno. uh, I think another Green World or one of those records that we did Mm -hmm. early on. And I'd ask him a question and he'd be, he'd go right to, but the kids in the cages and this, and he's talking about Trump. And I'm just like, I'm like, yeah, but like, so what, what do you, how do you think what Brian Eno song off this record would be a good yeah. soundtrack to those kids in cages? <laughs> it's like, I'm right. trying to pull him into <laughs> the podcast. Something. Just yeah. give me something, dude. And, and it's just, we finally get him talking. Like I said, he's a beautiful soul. The episode's great. Um, and then afterwards, we're out on his, uh, on his, in his backyard, 
and we're smoking the joint. There's, I have pictures of all of this and I've shared them and, and I'll, I'll share them again. And he's just, we're having this, this conversation, we're connecting and I say, hey man, how much CNN and MSNBC are you watching? And he's like, all day long. And I'm like, dude, you've got to turn it off. <laughs> It's, I did the same thing, man. I watched it when Trump first got into office. I could not get off CNN and sure. I was depressed and I felt terrible. I was like, you have to change the channel. If you want to check in in the news in the morning, read a newspaper, but no more opinions, no more opinion yeah. pieces. It's only going to work you up. And he's just like, thank you. And then he goes, do you want to go jump on my trampoline? And I'm like, yeah, man. <laughs> let's go jump on your trampoline perfect and then and then we there's a picture of me and him like in the air and we're like ah! and i've never spoken to him since well i mean that, <laughs> but those iconic people it's like uh all right brother i'll see you in two or three lifetimes you know and then they kind of float away on a on <laughs> thank a, you star child on a, on a, on a like a like a hoverboard beanbag chair like a, a shit you've never seen they just lay on it and just float away out of it you're like wow Hey, where do you get, who makes those? And then like, like, there's two assistants you've never seen that are like hands on your shoulders, twice your height. Like, all right, all right, we've, thank you, Josh. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you yeah, know. they just took me away. Oh, okay, okay. They say they say something incredibly personal that only you would know. Oh, like, you oh, know, like, like, fuck. Just like, here, your social security number is this, 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 and this. <laughs> Remember, we know you live. Josh, you know you... love and light in team. <laughs> put they put you in a car, just so you know. Just so I, I forgot her. something. I forgot something, Matt, is that we were talking about clothes or something. And he was like, he, was, he loves his son. And he was like, yeah, my, I gave my sons on my clothes. He's like, he dresses cool. He's a cooler kid than I was. And he's like, and I was a cool kid. And he goes, hey, man, would you want some of my clothes? And I was like, yeah, dude. And then he brings down this box of shit. And like, I mean, I'm like, oh, man, I'll take this. I'll take this. And then by the end of it, he because he have to like, say, I'd take this. He goes, nah, I think I want to keep that. And then he'd be like, I'd be like, all right, I'll take that. And he'd go, nah, I think I'm keeping that too. And then he was like, I was like, all right, well, what about this thing with like 95 zippers? And he was like, you can have that. And I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> so I've got it in the closet right now. Hold on, That's I'll go great. get it in a second. I'll go get it in a second. But That's awesome. um, this is the funny thing. When I was getting ready to move to New York and I was selling all my shit, I brought mm -hmm. that along with like some other dope, like John Barbado shit that I, that I'm, I don't wear anymore, but it's all good. Sure. Vintagey, cool shit. I take it to one of those stores on Melrose to sell clothes, and they didn't want anything but the Perry Farrell zipper jacket, and they were gonna give me 16 bucks for it. And I was like, fuck that, dude. I'm keeping no way. it. No way. That's a keepsake. Keepsake. Yeah. I can't believe yeah. I haven't brought it there. But it's it's so funny. I my my wife and I were just cleaning shit out, and she's got some you know pretty cool stuff. And we went to like uh, uh the 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 Buffalo Exchange, and had to get in the online queue. And she goes and you know turns her stuff in. And they didn't want like any of her stuff except for like one or two things. And they were mm -hmm. like, they're like we're not we're not buying uh like like jeans jeans that fit you well, like jeans that that look good on a body they're not buying for women like right now it's all just like fucking baggy as shit i guess yeah you know, like, that okay, crazy cool you know like it was just so funny that it's like we don't want clothes that fit thank you though <laughs> we're, I appreciate we're, only, that. <laughs> we're only doing the rosie o'donnell collection now That's, if, if and, it's not ann bryant we ain't buying think uh uh if stevie nicks was a biker chick okay <laughs> so really flowy but jean is what That's we're a good with. look that's a good look. Mm -hmm. Is it? Is it? All right. So that bad. That gets to the question. Like, is yeah. Perry Farrell the band? Is he the reason? Right. Because look at not only did he make this band, I, I mean, he created um, Lollapalooza and the whole yeah. format of the traveling yeah, he festival. He was the first yeah, person to do that, which mm -hmm. is, I mean, I think Coachella, I think Governor's Ball, I think every music festival. Aside from the raves, because the raves were going on before them, they yes. just became more fancy schmancy. But I, I mm -hmm. think I think there is no Coachella without Perry Farrell. Hundred percent. I, I went to the uh, the the second uh, Lollapalooza when I was like, um, I think I was a senior. It was a, a summer after after high school. I went with with some friends. This was when uh, James Addiction wasn't in it, um, but it was that thing where it was just like it blew me away. I was like, you're going to do a second one and not be in it. Wow. You know, that's, that's, that's incredible. That kind of yeah. shows, I mean, definitely, yeah. I'm sure did it on, on, on a, in no small part because of the money, but also so what, 
you're also getting these bands together and getting all these people to see different shit. You know, I remember, I remember, um, uh, 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 the people had gone long and they were going to, there was a, there's a talk that like ice cube wasn't gonna be able to come out and people were like, good, who cares? And I was a big ice cube fan. And I was mm -hmm. like, I was like, fuck that. And like, kind of get into arguments guys. And then ice cube comes out on stage to back in black ACDC with like a big 40 of beer. And he's like, he's like, he's like, yo, the homeboys, Ch Red Hot Chili Peppers gave me half an hour of their time. And then people are like, woo, and these guys near me were like, fuck that. And they were so much more angry. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we want to hear the California queef rock of Red Hot Chili Peppers. Skipping and dripping. It was cool that you had all these multi, so many genres, so many types of music. You know, it wasn't like... It wasn't like a, a Jane's Addiction was just doing. It's you yeah. Know, it's yeah. It, it's, it's all shit like my band. You it's, know, like I, I don't. I I think one of the lineups one year that my I I never went, but my sister and her friend went. They saw I think it was like the Breeders, Cypress yeah. Hill, uh -huh. uh, Beastie Boys. Yep. Uh, I want to not Rage, but like Body Count. Yeah. You yeah. know, and and it, it's just I don't think you've ever even Woodstock was all rock. It was yeah, all exactly. one genre of exactly. music. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, look, it, it, is, is Perry Farrell? That's because this is what I'm saying is if he's the guy that can create that. Right. Is he the mastermind and the reason why? Because you look at it is the way he danced, the way he mm -hmm. moved. This isn't just the album. I, I'm looking at, at no, James I mean, Addiction as the whole. Gun to my head, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say not it was all him, but he was most, you know, he was most of it. I mean, they, the other members of the band member kind of reinvented themselves. Like Dave Navarro is an incredible guitarist. Yeah. But I'm the thing that struck me about him after James Addiction was like, everyone was like, holy shitty. Every, every girl was like, the fuck is this guy with his rippling abs and eyeliner? Sexy, dude. So sexy. Sex, so you know? sexy. But and that, oh, that, and fuck! This just came. This is just a memory I just had. I remember right. at the first Lollapalooza, being on top of a hill, passing a. We were. It was. It was a somewhere outside of Seattle, and being on top. And of course, this is the middle. This is ninety two, so it's all grunge. It's it, you know Pearl Jam's there, Soundgarden's there, holy shit in their hometown. So you know they're they're taking all the spotlight, but we're passing a weed pipe on top of this hill, looking down at the crowd and the stage. And looking at it like the overhead shot of a medieval war. Yeah. Ministry comes on. And I was like, who's this? And I'd just gotten high and I'd never heard them. And I was like, what is fucking that? <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone started moving. And I'm just like, it is a war. Like it was the crazy. <laughs> so thank you, Perry Farrell, for that experience alone. You know. I gotta give you, I gotta give you my my Lollapalooza story then. Okay. Uh, I went to it in 2002. I well, would I say you didn't go. no, no, I didn't go to one. I didn't go to the early one that my sister well, went to. I well, went I to one of the, one of the traveling, like, oh, man, this was, it was a weird one. Cause it was an all genre of like, of one type. It was like audio slave, Jane's addiction. Mm -hmm. Um, I think incubus, uh, Queens of the stone age, the Donna's. I might be missing another band that's Man, in that. I'm kicking them off. You're getting them all. I, that, I got you know, Outcast, a perfect circle played for a little over a week. Um, God, I wish they perfect circle was there. Again. Fuck, no, it was great. It was, right a, it was a it was a it was a great it was a great you know lineup, and that was why we went. I was really into Queens of the Stone Age at the time, and Audio Slave. How could you not? Yeah. And on the way there, I read I rode with my friend Jenny Lacovi, and we and I finished off like you know like ten beers out of a thirty pack. <laughs> and I and then I get to the show we're in the parking lot pre gaming and my buddy gives me a Vicodin. Mm -hmm. It was nice. that. Uh, so my buddy gives me a Vicodin and and then I try to fart and I shart. And so I have to go to this little uh, ditch. This is in Virginia where we are at the Jiffy Lube Center and I I I brand new white. You know, an eighteen dollar pair of Ralph Lauren white boxers, which is which is the first moment I realized you don't buy white. No, you know, if you if really you wear if you have the if you especially if you're a man in your forties and you're wearing white underwear, like the balls on you, <laughs> the balls. It's really so, impressive. 
It's impressive. Dark underwear all the way. I don't know why I didn't know that. Also, boxers. Come on, boxer briefs, dude. Wow, tuck yeah. them and tuck them and suck them. So no. I, so I'm so I'm so I, I I wipe my ass and then I go into the show and then I just start pounding beers and I take yeah. more Vicodin and then I pass out. And when I wake up, I'm outside of the festival in the in like a in like the forest. And I walk and I hear all the music and I start walking and I'm all cut up and I, I get to this high fence. that's by like maybe 30 feet in the air. I climb that fence, like get down a little bit, fall and then pass out again. And then when I woke up, I wake up and I'm I'm just torn to shit, but I'm in the pavilion, not the pavilion, the like the grass area of the pavilion just laying on the ground. And Audio Slave is like, wow, yeah, yeah, come back to fire. And I'm just like, Ugh. and I can't find my friends. And then oh, I no. finally stumble into them, and then we go home. And and I don't know what happened. I don't any. Wow. I don't know from 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 the Donnas. I it was just out. And then next thing I know, I missed every band. I jumped a fence. I got I obviously got kicked out. And and you got back in though. Wow, oh. amazing. I, mean, I, I could have died. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> oh so God, you're okay. We wouldn't be doing this podcast. It could have gone a different no. way. You wouldn't even know really? who I am. Yeah. There, there were others who it went an entirely wholly different direction. You know, they they wandered out to a a, a busy highway near the fairgrounds or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just, what happened to Josh? Just, <laughs> Just like like the crazy person from that. Uh, um, oh, never mind. You know, if I said the reference, nobody would get it. Uncle. <laughs> video rabbit in the headlight you guys remember that music video watch it it's just like a homeless guy walking through like a tunnel in london and cars are oh like that was that was like radiohead wasn't it it would no, then, well yeah it's 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 tom york with uh yes, this dj you. yeah all right. yeah and all right the we, truck hits him and the truck explodes yeah that yes was, that, that yes. was wild that's that was what wild. that was the mo thank dude i should have just fucking said it instead of stopping it but maybe the me stopping <laughs> we, it and then we bringing worked, it up we again we worked through it we worked through it man we went a long yeah. way for the joke we did. But you, you saw it you everybody saw it break down in pieces mm -hmm. so that's right is dave navarro the secret sauce behind the power of this record I, it I, it's kind of one of those things that i i would love to hear it from from their mouths but I kind of love that it's just the secret sauce is completely secret to me. I don't know where this record came from. I don't know who, you know, Perry wrote the lyrics and stuff and who knows how much of the music uh, and they all kind of collaborate. But they were like this band that kind of just seemed to walk out of the sea for me, where it was just like, wow, these guys are kind of based on nothing I can put my finger on that I'm that aware of at that age. But, you know, they're just doing they're doing heavy shit, but they're also doing anything they want and this is a period where i would hear the name of a band and somebody like they're cool and i'd go buy one of their albums and yeah. go, this sucks like i would yeah. i would buy like the wrong album for one of these these bands you know like a newer one not one of their cooler early ones or what have you you know because i just there, we didn't have the internet i didn't have that thing where i could listen to shit certain record places would let you let, listen to stuff but i was I too impatient so i just yeah. like let me just buy this cassette and pray it's good Mm -hmm. And that was one of those albums that was just like, you know, not that I, 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 I went hiking and I listened to this album for the first time in I don't know how long. And I still really dig most of it. There's a couple songs I'm like, could take or leave, but it's just like, yeah, this is, this is like really well produced. The songs are really well done. They're all over the place. And it's, it's definitely super hip and super cool, but you can tell they're, they're having a blast. You can tell they're having fun making this album. You know. Just for dude, this is they they broke up. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine going into the studio with with somebody that just uh, is taking sixty two percent of the money? It it's funny we were talking about Axl Rose before. Remember he pulled that shit where he wasn't going on stage until they all signed the rights over to him, and every hour they didn't go on stage, they each get fined something bananas like a hundred thousand dollars or something by the stadium. And they finally were like, fucking fine out, Axel, you own it. You own your guns and roses. Can we just go on stage so I don't lose my house? You know, yeah. that's worse. But like, this makes me think of that where you're like, why? You know, what, what the fuck makes you so special? I, you you know? know what, Matt, this is what makes it special. I yeah. think you can replace 
every single person in that band except for Perry. You're probably right. You're probably yeah. right. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking out. You know, I was only saying that from the perspective of how I'd feel if I was like sure. a drummer. Where I like, I, if I was like the drummer or something, I'd be like, can I have like five percent more? Just, <laughs> just, just throw me a bone, man. I just want to. I want to put a pool in something. You know, we bought. We, we bought <laughs> in Burbank. It gets yeah. hot there, dude. I don't care. Just yeah. I mean, and but it it it's it's so funny. But I'm thinking in terms of like uh, when someone goes on Shark Tank. And like nobody's wanting their shit, and then one person is like, one shark is like, all right, I'll give you this much for forty percent or fifth, like something insane. And the person's like, they have no other bids, and it's kind of like, you're probably better off just taking, giving up that chunk, so you can take your whatever burger truck to new heights with yeah. this shark. Where it's kind of like Perry Farrell, you know, he was that dude clearly. And it was, I mean, God bless them for going along with it because in the end it worked out. In the end, they still kept a certain percentage of that publishing. Like, you know, even if you have five, ten percent, that's pretty well, good chunk of a song that gets played all the time. Let's let's find out. I agree with you. That's how much of the, do you have that little blurb of how much they've sold, Adam, and like all their stuff? Let me double check here. I'd imagine their streaming numbers are pretty solid. Well, let's find out what they got. Hold on, I'll tell you on Dark Lord Spotify. So the album sold two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand copies in its first year of release, uh, and then uh, the, when they went on tour, they opened for Iggy Pop and the Ramones. By the end of that tour, they were headlining clubs and theaters. So, but we don't have like their overall sales. Hold up, on the, look on their Wikipedia page. So, judging by their Spotify, they get two million uh, two point two five monthly listeners. Right. Uh, Jane says is their number one song with ninety million streams. That's yeah, been wild. That's that's bigger than been caught stealing on Spotify. Been caught stealing is yeah because you you kind of said it like dude people love and this is there's an epidemic of white people making quasi reggae songs and it needs to stop huh. and and this is very much in the vein of like a bad fish it's Jane says it, yeah it's and, not, it's got, and it's also you know to to a broader scale um let's say island black people music because you can inc include other parts of the caribbean you know like because yes. it's, it's got the steel drums it's got the steel yeah. drums in the background and they're a great addition you know um but it's he, his voice and his inflection does a, have a little bit of that uh that that reggae patois in the song i would agree with that i, I love that word patois patois is so good yeah. i i it basically just means accent but like i uh i i i i, I also thought of it there's when you said epidemic i thought you were gonna say of like of bad boy sad guy songs because <laughs> You know, like like songs where it's just like, you know, I'm just a bad I'm bad boy rocker, but here's my sad song. Like Kiss had Beth. Um uh uh, uh Poison had Every Rose Has Its Thorn. You mm. know, um Motley Crue had uh Home Sweet Home, you know. These songs are just like, Oh, it's time for the bad boy to cry. And I think this is Jane's addictions, <laughs> you know? Like it's such a sad song, man. Like, when I was a kid, I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, this woman's doomed. She's oh, doomed. Do they actually know uh oh, there's a woman. There's a woman named Jane. This song is about somebody, isn't it, Adam? Yeah, I think I yeah, I remember hearing and that. their name, yeah, their name. It's like it was like a roommate of somebody. Mm. Adam, do you have that fact? Yeah, so the band was dubbed Jane's Addiction in honor of Pharrell's housemate, Jane Bainter, who was their muse and inspiration. Um, as Pharrell says, uh, my girlfriend and I were sitting in the car and we started to think about band names. She threw in Jane's heroin experience. I thought that doesn't work big enough. <laughs> you want to invite <laughs> people in, you can the heroin <laughs> here for. Oh my God. I have to, I have to add the fact that my mother's name is Jane. Um, what her what's her addiction? What would you say? <laughs> it's, it would, it's, 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 it's either British movies or red wine. Probably Me, mine too, dude. Probably oh, dude. My, my mom is so, we have like, we're like 13% British and my mom, man, oh, that's, really? she's bumped that up to a hundred. Yeah. Like she is, she's so like, I always say like if my mom, everybody's get like a hall pass of like who they could fuck. My mom would fuck Dame Judy Dench. 
Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I sent my, uh, you know, my, my friend's mom is the same way. And she's always like, you know what? Well, but the, I like the British version better, you know, everything. And yeah. uh, I sent him, I was like, you need to send your mom this. And I sent a video for uh, Hulk Hogan's I'm a real American, you know, video. <laughs> and uh, as a joke, and he, and he just wrote back at me. He's so funny. He wrote back immediately. She'd say, I like the British Bulldogs version better. <laughs> <laughs> No, such a deep cut. So random. So random. <laughs> Dude. All right. So I can't find their total sales. I, I'm really curious to see how much they've made in their careers. So oh, because oh, yeah. All right, Adam, before is there what is there anything worth talking about from the tracks or anything like you have anything that was really like that, um... No, I mean Jane says the song was more of a detailed the description of the person they named the band after, but nothing that ha stands out really. Yeah, Mountain Song rules. I mean, they, I, I really like this record a lot, man. I, I had a lot of yeah. fun listening. I really did. It's you know what I was kind of thinking is that when it comes to Jane's Addiction, and this isn't a knock on them because you know mm -hmm. this is a great record and Ritual is a great record. Yeah, but everything after it just kind of is. You know, I, I'm not saying I don't dig it when 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 you're done listening to the record and it goes to Spotify, like, you know, rando songs in that genre. And then you start playing like other stuff off like strays. I'm like, oh, I like this. I also yeah. like do you like uh, Porto for Pyros? Was that too? Yeah, I like Um, it's it's I'm, like, I don't want to I, I don't really love will make great pets. Because Hush, it, it, don't it's, say that. <laughs> it's, it's just to me, to me, I love the concept, I love the melody, but it just gets so repetitive to me. Yeah, you but know? this you can dance like this, dude. That's true. Like, we'll make great in the fucking 90s. Yeah, I, I mean, no. I, they did the song, uh, they had two songs I really fucked with. They did one off the private part soundtrack, it was called uh. Sure. With my heart thun, thun, and I'm a bang, thun, thun. I'm a oh, high yeah, fan. That's a good song. They had that one, yeah. and then they had the one off their second point of a Pyro's record is uh, a song called Tahini Moon. I don't know where I'm building the sun tonight. Oh, yeah. Under the Tahini shit. Yeah, dude, I, I like Perry, man. And not yeah. just that we're, we're oh, fucking yeah. homies. I mean like I, really I said, do. his voice is just is just incredible. It's just his his vo his, his his vocal timber and his singing style, you know, uh, like just just it, it, the band would be nowhere without that alone. They also wrote good stuff, but you know, just having that that sound. Is, I, I no, I I think here's the deal. I think as far as sound, Jane's you know, Addiction is one hundred percent Perry to the bone. But the live show, you got fucking a shirtless, dreadlocked Dave Navarro. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is sexy, dude. That is, yeah. and and then and then Perry's wearing the weird open shirt. Steven's got the cur the cute curly cues. Yeah. He's adorable. Steven, sure. when he came on the podcast, was one of the sweetest guys we had ever talked to. He was so awesome. happy, and uh, and I haven't met. Uh, Avery, I think his name is, but I mean, I assume he's cool too. Yeah. Um, this band is broken up yeah. 45 times. <laughs> but it's so funny, man. It's just, it's it, 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 hard enough holding a relationship together. But imagine you're in that relationship and you like write songs together and mm -hmm. people really love those songs. And people are like, hey, why don't you bring your ex wife around and sing us a tune? Sing us that song we like. And you're like, I hate that bitch. I hate hey, that. take it easy. Listen. I just want to say, I just want to hear Jane says, you know, uh, it, but, it, but it, I don't, I think here's the thing, Matt, hold on. Lekka, Jesus Christ, where's the ball? <laughs> oh, Jesus, you, 40, you have 45 balls in this. Why did you want that one? Sorry. <laughs> Do you see here? Great. Adam sent this quote by Dave Navarro. Yeah. What we always break up if it's not real. We really can't fake it. We can make a million dollars for three months touring, but we would fucking hate each other, which isn't good. Even with the nostalgia, it's not worth it. It doesn't sound good or look good. One of the things with Jane's is that we have never been good at faking it. Yeah. Well, well, how can you... I mean, look, Guns N' Roses broke up shortly after he says he puts that contract down, right? I think that's got to be used your illusion. Sure. 
Yeah. Now they've been playing together for a few years. I'm assuming two to three, and then they're about to record their first breakthrough signed to a label record. They got a big advance. Right. And, and, and Perry, before they even are really the band who they are about to become, he says, I want, I mean, that's got to fucking, you, you're carrying that baggage every, that's not a good way to start. Yeah. It, it almost makes you think, what if a couple of them were like, this shit ain't going nowhere anyway. Fuck it. Have no. your chunk of nothing. You know? No, they knew it, dude. They all they, knew it. Interesting. Because I, I don't know. I feel like every artist, at least on some level, even if they make something, they're like, I know this is gold. They wonder, will it land? You know? Because there's 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 a there's a, a million albums that we listen to them now and go, man, that's incredible. But it, there was nothing in its day. You know, went nowhere in its day. Like, you know, like Suge Otis, Inspiration Information. You listen to that album, you're like, holy fuck, this was so ahead of its time. Yeah, that's the problem. You know, <laughs> it was, yeah. it was, it's so good. So, like, I could see them kind of being, I mean, in a sense, I'm kind of just making it, <laughs> hoping to make it a little better on them back then. Because it's like, when you're broke and you're signing almost all of your album away to this one dude, you'd be like, dude, like, I worked the fry later at Arby's. Like, come <laughs> the fuck on. Give me something. Give me something a little better than that. I just want to know. I really wish we could find their total sales. I can't believe you can't find that because I really would love to know what 12% mm -hmm. of, of whatever they like. I mean, because look, Perry, not Perry. Well, yeah, Perry is, is uh, I mean, he lives in Pacific Palisade. So obviously he's doing great. And yeah. Lava Blues is still happening. And he gets, he gets, you know, 62% of this money and they still sell shit. Well, uh, I will say, good. Just, just to give you a little perspective, I was just thinking about this. When I was in, DC, I uh, did uh, the, the the Benson Ball back in like 2010, and I did a, a show. I did a, a, a like a, a Jesse Thorne interviewed interviewed me and um, um, uh, Ian Mackay, and you oh, know wow. from Minor Threat and yeah. you know Fugazi and Sweetheart. And by the way, I will I will never not love him, not only for music, but he was like, he's like, hey, when are you going up tonight? I want to see your act. And I'm like, dude, I don't go on stage till like midnight. And he's like, where? And I, t I was like, it's a black cat, man. It's midnight. I know you have kids. He's like, dude, I'm coming. Oh, like, we're just like, shut up, you know? And he went and saw me. So I'll never forget that. But uh, Jesse brought up the fact, it brought the, that, um, uh, is it not Todd, it Todd, ba Todd Berry? Yes, Todd, I think, it was, was it Todd Berry? Had a, had a joke that was like about how Fugazi never charged more than five bucks at the door and never took any advertising money and wouldn't play places that sold alcohol. And um, he's like, I wonder if his, uh, his uh, bassist ever said to him, ever said to Ian, hey man, can we make it seven bucks so I, I don't have to have a roommate when I'm 40? And like, that was his joke. And Jesse told that to, to Ian and Ian was like, he's like, well, I should say that bassist owns three houses. So it worked out. You know, it was just like, fuck. Yeah. You know, so as yeah. much as we think of something being so small, you know, I'm it's sure massive. all those people are okay. They're yeah, probably okay. it's 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 if when you when you have an album that sells a million copies, unless you're TLC, <clears throat> you're fucking rich. Because I don't know if you know this, they yeah. filed for bankruptcy when they had their most popular record came out. That's and right. I know, and I know that fact because I do this podcast. <laughs> Which I don't Adam, know why I keep doing it. I just Adam keep doing it. The band's net worth is $50 million. The album is actually certified multi-platinum. So whatever, 62.5% of those sales were wow. So Perry That's Farrell's chilling. He is <laughs> chilling very hard. I mean, he, he's, he's got so much money, he could just give away his clothes to random yeah. strangers. Yeah. I, <laughs> you know. Well, the, the thing, when you were talking about how like hot they are live, hot looking, I remember as like a... Even as a kid, I was just like, this guy, he looks just weird enough to be a rock guy. You know, like he's not, I wouldn't say classically handsome, but every every girl I came across in school wanted to fuck him. You know, he had that skinny guy appeal. And uh, I bet he's got a long dick, dude. Probably just, yeah, huge, 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 weird, weird hog. Like the kind of thing of a, a strange village in the jungle would worship. <laughs> On, a, on an altar you know what's funny um, and I, I don't this is off topic guys but everybody always talks about how black dudes have the biggest dicks no man 
it's it's like it's like it's like 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 central american mm, like yeah, okay. there's the, every time you find <laughs> the biggest dicks ever it's always like some farmer in ecuador sure, that it's got like a fucking two foot dick so mm-hmm. i'm just letting everybody know no it's <laughs> well it's funny how the, the kids came up with the term big big dick energy and you can kind of be like oh yeah that is a thing when you see a uh, 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 a a a tiny guy with enormous hands who's remarkably calm and doesn't worry about anything. You're like, yep. There's <laughs> there's some there's there, there's an orca down below. Who who could who could win in a fight, Perry Fayler or Dave Navarro? Ooh. Well, Perry's got him on reach, but I think yep. if uh, you know Dave Navarro's got like those, he's got some 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 serious muscles on. <laughs> yeah, no, he but he's also tight. got. He's he also tight. he's got that he's got the those Mike Tyson body blows just chop him he, chop him he's down also, like a tree. He also dresses like uh, he's about to fight in the Thunderdome. You know what I mean? <laughs> like leather, like with spikes there, and he's just like like the stuff that Batman <laughs> he, has. He, he looks like the heel of the Thunderdome, where yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. Like six chicks around him and stuff. You know, and he's got like he's 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 like the Ric Flair, where everyone in ever everyone in Barter in Barter Town's like fuck with this guy just lose. I hate. I'm so sick of looking at his fucking nipple rings. So like. <laughs> If a big guy, if someone starts beating Dave Navarro, they're like, come on, kill that guy. <laughs> kill that I'm sick of his fucking eyeliner. He fucked oh. my wife. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you rule, man. You rule. Nah, this is so fun, you rule. Man. You rule. Um, what, do I, what, is there anything? Do we have a Patreon question, Adam? Out of all of these, oh, here, so let's pick it up from here. Out of all of these questions, because this is where, here, this is, Peter, edit this. This is, this is pulling the curtain back to our okay. friend Matt. Um, we're trying to get people to give us more money on Patreon by saying, yes. we'll read your questions yeah, you know, from, from this. So out of all of these questions, what, what do you think would be the best one to ask Matt as a fake Patreon question? Hmm. Hasn't been a band like this before since. Twenty one's not bad. I'm going back up, going back top to bottom. Here, I got a good one. Well, I think this is it. Pretty much about it. Yeah, it's already did nine. I'm thinking. I'm gonna think. Hold on. Do you think about this? Yeah. Eight's not a bad one, considering Which how much we've been talking about Pharrell. Apparently, because the more arrogant a person is in rock, the more hype they are. I'd say eight or twenty-one would be my. I'll do that. All right, give me a name. Man. I got. It. I got it. I got it. All right. Uh, all right. We got a Patreon question before we get you out of here, and then I do our, cool, our rapid fires. Uh, this is from uh, Perky G's forty-two. <laughs> Good name. I don't, great name. Do you agree with this Perry Farrell quote? I have pretty much, I pretty much have made it. Or let me take that again. I pretty much have it made because the more arrogant a person is in rock and roll, the more hype they are. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would agree with it. And I think you got to take that with, with, with a, a level of tongue in cheek for sure. Cause you just, I think he to really to really enjoy rock and roll. You also got to l- really dig how ridiculous it is and how the ridiculousness of it is kind of what makes it great. You know, I mean, it wasn't until you had uh, people that were kind of getting on stage and basically being like, like, I'm the fucking best, you know, that you that made it like, you know, Freddie Mercury, we are the champions where it was kind of like a, it was a massive fuck you where people were putting them down for their fame. Like, oh, who cares? You're on the radio all the time. And you're like, goddamn right, I'm on the radio all the time. You know? Yeah. Uh, and it, but it was also like, but I'm wearing, I'm going to wear a crown and a fucking fur, you know, cape. So it's, and him being like, it, it, like, he's, he's just like, you, you I want to be as hype as possible, you know? And to do that, you have to be arrogant. So I've got it made, everyone. You're like, that's a joke. <laughs> Literally, he had, that's, he, he just, he, it's, it's, it's I think it's I think it's true and it's hilarious. Is it the but, is it the is it the music or is it the artist? I mean, is yeah, Kanye West is Kanye West the 
the reason he's i mean you can't deny that he makes great music but is it the reason we talk about him all the time is it because of the music or is it because of all the shit the arrogant shit he does the, the arrogant shit uh definitely adds to it but i would say you know to draw to draw a corollary i always think about you know tom cruise will always be a movie star always he you most know, true statement always, you've said today always <laughs> but he probably won't be that cool because he works so hard and he's so focused and he kind of, in a sense, and Tom, if you're listening, I'm a huge fan, but you don't have a lot of chill. You don't seem like someone who can sit on a couch and just fucking relax for like 20 minutes. You can't. Yeah. And so in a sense, you can't be as cool as say George Clooney, who'll never be as big a movie star as you, but that dude will go fucking go, he'll go, he'll, Clooney will probably fall asleep on your couch. <laughs> After he played basketball and had a couple <laughs> shots of tequila, you know, like I think Perry Farrell is definitely a rock star, but he's not. He he, he doesn't he, at this point. He probably doesn't give a fuck about fame. He probably never did, but he was like, but if we're if I'm famous, my records will sell, and I can get my art in front of that many more people. Almost sure. like how you and I would love to be like on a TV show and shit. Not to be like, hey, that's my face on a fucking billboard, but to be like, more people are going to come to my show now. Yeah. Oh, more God, people yeah. are going to see the goddamn <laughs> comedy jam. Fuck yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. That's why we, that's w the main reason why we do it, so they can come see us do the art we want to do. You know, it's kind of that, it's, it's, so it's like, not that he's making a sacrifice by being like, check me out. I'm a big dick rock star coming down the mountain. <laughs> but, you know, like, he knew that's, you know, you have to do that shit. Yeah. As, much, as much as Kurt Cobain was like, I hate being famous, he he loved his art touching people. And he also couldn't help the fact that he was a beautiful man. Like, you look at pictures of him, you're like, fuck, that's a good looking dude. He's trying yeah. to mess it up, but he can't. He still looks good. God. <laughs> like, he probably it's, rolled it, down a dirt hill every morning. Was he, like, he, is, pictures. <laughs> he is the epitome of, God, I, I just don't want to be famous. I just want to make art please stop it he's like yeah we just did we just did um the mtv uh unplugged on the podcast oh, yeah. and to find out um that the set list they chose was so it would suck they were like we don't, wow. we don't. they're like just please play play smells like teen spirit and he's just like no i'm not oh, i'm picking yeah. all the songs that i think are, are like not gonna play well or that it's only the diehard fans are gonna want to hear yeah and I just respect that so fucking much. It was it's like, still so good. You know, like well, you Lead know, Belly. Are you kidding me? And that song's for, incredible. Dude, funny it, that you say that. Funny that you say that. I know we've already rehashed this, everybody, but Matt doesn't know. Okay. So if you're a listener, <laughs> turn this part off. Um, it, it's he, there was such a huge ovation after they finished. Uh, Where did you sleep last night? Yeah. That, that the producers begged them like beg please go out and play smells like teen spirit and he just knew it he was like nope that's smart it will, it'll never it's like we're done that's my art it ends with that there was a period after yeah. the whole night through yeah well it's like also you know by then smells like teen spirit incredible song but it was you know it's a it's a it's a a, a rock and pop classic where did you sleep last night is a ghost that lives in a fucking swamp like that song is terrifying. Yeah. Like it's like, dude, I just trotted out Godzilla himself out of the sea <laughs> and he ate a building and he left. I'm not gonna play my fucking video song now. And it's yeah. you know, it shows his vision that he was just like, You guys don't know what you're asking, but it's the wrong ask. It really is. We got yeah. it. It's in the can. You know, like we we did it. We yeah. Nailed it. Dave Grohl, Dave, Dave Grohl said on the song selection for Unplugged, uh, we'd seen the other Unplugs and didn't like any of them because most of the bands would treat them like rock shows, play their yeah. hits like they're inside MSG, except with acoustic guitars. You're right. And I, I think uh, I think Nirvana understood, uh, you know, they understood what how, how special this art form is and they wanted just to stick to that. Mm -hmm. So big ups to them. All right. And that brings up to the last question before we get in rapid fire. Cause I thought of this while I was, while, while we've been talking about it is, can we put Jane's addiction in that same breath as the Nirvana's, the Pearl jams, hmm. the Metallica's, the guns and roses, the, the bands that, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. I think, you know, because they had a limited amount of albums, but so did Nirvana. Um, you know, it's hard to put them, in in that
I, I'm I'm a huge Pearl Jam fan, but it's like, do I think about them in the same echelon as even Guns N' Roses? Didn't have a lot of albums, but there, it's I, I think about their impact. But like I said before, gun to my head, yeah. I mean, it's hard, but I would say yes. It's 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 tough. It's down to the needle, but I think I think I'd put them in there be, because they were so massively massively influential. They were one of those bands that came out and people. Tried to be them, but failed. You know, like them or hate them, Pearl Jam were insanely influential. Everybody yeah. tried to copy his. Everybody and voice still do and everything. Absolutely. Um, and uh, you know, and but but it, it, be, be, they, to me, they were like aliens, and that's like a sign of a of, of a of a great rock band to me. When a when a when a young person uh, hears a band and goes, the, "The fuck are these guys from?" Yeah. Like I, un, I, un, until Adam said, "Yeah, they're an LA band." I was like, "Oh, that's right, they are." I forgot that. I mean, the the, the running joke when I moved to LA was um, uh, James Addiction exploded and become became everyone in Venice Beach, you know, because that that look was still you still had all the white guys with the with the dreadlocks and shit and all that and mm -hmm. weird shit hanging off them in braids and a little makeup maybe and kind of you know. It's still, still like that today, dude. There's, you know, still, those, there's still that selection of people, yeah. Hundred percent. But in but in '88, you didn't see anyone like that that was on a that that was on a on a stage until like not that they started it. A lot of people were already doing it, but they were the ones that got the first kind of yeah. No, shine right. on them and, and were good enough to own it. You know? I don't think we can put. I don't think we can put Jane's Addiction up there with like like if Motley Crue if Guns N' Roses is here and Motley Crue is here I would say like Nirvana is here and mm -hmm. and they're like here so they're like the, yeah. they're on that like Alice in Chains level which is like yes. like Adam put yes. it second tier right like we got to we got to where we are musically they've influenced stuff but they didn't it was so funny that I can't say they didn't change it because this shit came out in 88 yeah it came out in 88. It's yeah, like, it doesn't make why, sense. That's why I keep stressing how weird it was to hear this yeah. music then. If it came out in 93, cool. Yeah, cool if album. this came out in 90, yeah. Cool, you know, Not, I like yeah. it. I think it's really good. But like in 88, I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, that's crazy. No. This came out in 88. All right, no. all right, let's wrap this shit up. Rapid fire, <laughs> you ready? You ready, Maddie? Let's do it, let's do it. All right, favorite song on the record. Oh, the f the first one that comes to mind is uh, is Mountain Song. I know that was like the first single, but I just remember that being. I remember just riding around on a skateboard, listening to that song, and just being like, "This shit kicks ass. It's great." Yeah. I, yeah all right. You know what? You're gonna have to edit this because I already fucking moved the track listing. But I, I think I, I it's it's between one it. of the first two. It's between one of the first two. It's either Up the Beach or Ocean Size. I think it's Up the Beach yeah. because that. Cause that really, that really set me into uh, a place where I was, I was excited. And I, I, it's weird the way that you said you heard this and you were like, oh my God, who is this band? When I put this on, I was like, this is the album I need right now in my yeah. life. And <laughs> up, up the beach really brings you into this, this Incredible. vibe and everything. So I, I think it's, I don't think it's the best song on the record, but in my opinion, up up the beach is is hundred percent. All right, up the beach into ocean size makes me feel like I'm on acid inside yeah. a wave. Yes, like inside a wave that's yes. throwing me around. And you and know? all the talk we've had about the California sound and that Venice sound. This is a this from having lived in Los Angeles as long as we both had. Yeah. Uh, this this is an LA record. This is an mm -hmm. LA rock and roll record. This can't right. be made anywhere else. Yeah. Um, all right, least favorite song on the record. Oh, well, I'm looking at it. Look at it. Um, I mean, maybe "Thank You, Boys" because it's just fucking around. It just sounds like a, a lounge thing. I don't hate it, but that's one that's like ding 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 uh -huh. ding. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I I think that you know what, but I. I, I might agree with you because it's the 101 and it's short and it's whatever. Yeah. But I fucking despise that part that you brought up with the horns. Oh, really? Did he, I just, did he throw? Uh, it's, it's, uh, the, the rest of the song, it just doesn't need that part. The rest of the song, it just doesn't need that part. Yeah. So out of the whole record, I hate that part the most, but I, I'll also say that Thank You Boys, the minute, the one in one song, that's fucking, yeah, dude. Hmm. All right, now I got the last question. <laughs> and I'm, I'm praying to God you don't say Jane says after we found out what you know, uh, about that she's your mom. 
Um, what song <laughs> on this record? What song on this record would you fuck to? And is this a fuckable record? Oh man, I mean, I think it'd be fun to fuck to Ted. Just admit it, because it starts out slow and then it ends. You know, sex is right. You know, as long as you're both into it. As long as you're both like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. let's do it. Let's go. Should I choke you? You're like, honey, <laughs> what, I haven't even been <laughs> married for years. You know, you'd have to have a sense of humor about it. If someone was like, put this, put song, I was like, now we're gonna bone. Like, it's like, all right, you need to get out of my apartment or whatever. Like, it's to it, kick that dude out. But I think probably that, or or just do the do the do the up the beach ocean ocean side. Yeah, I, I think I think you can. I think it's it's the beginning of the record in is is really where you you get to fucking. I think this is a start from the beginning. Put it on. I, I'm gonna say this here on the podcast. This is a fuckable record. You can fuck to this. I agree with that. 100% yeah. you can fuck to this. Yeah. Um, let me figure that out. Uh, Matt, promote away. Anything you want to promote, buddy? Oh, just uh, I'm uh, at Bronger on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, I'm real Matt Bronger on TikTok um, and uh, Matt Bronger Comedy on Facebook, mattbronger.com for all my gigs. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's about it. I got, I got a, a new special that's coming out in the next couple months, but it's getting shopped around the network, so I don't know where it's going to land. But uh, keep you know, follow me online. I'll keep you posted. Keep yourselves in the Matt Bronger rotation old pole of it's gravity. Fun. <laughs> I love you, dude. I love thank you, you for too, doing buddy. this, man. Oh, it was a, it was a blast. What a joy. Thanks so much uh, for having me, guys.